In another section of the Voice of America website, we see the actual news stories. This is one example of a story about the day that an asteroid hit Earth and killed off the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. The title is New Details on Asteroid Strike That Killed Off the Dinosaurs. Under the story, we can see a text that has a number of words that may also be good targets for vocabulary learning. Some of the words are in bold, such as in the middle of the text. It, it tells us about impact processes from an eyewitness location. The word impact is highlighted, meaning that that is the vocabulary word. Following the story, there is a list of those words that were highlighted. Here, impact is listed, and it's defined as the force or action of one object hitting another. OK, so the story is talking about an impact by an asteroid. That is an impact that's responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. A good strategy for the student is to look at the definition, then look back at the news story to see how it's used in context. One of the things we want to teach when we teach vocabulary is how the words are actually used in sentences. So we've seen a couple of examples of the kinds of vocabulary activities that we can find on the internet. Let's meet our vocabulary expert now. Professor Rinali teaches English at Iowa State University. He has taught English in Africa and South Korea and has also done research to investigate how to teach vocabulary better by using technology. I asked Professor Rinali how he became interested in vocabulary, and this is what he said. How did you get interested in vocabulary? So my interest in second language vocabulary really started with my experience as a Peace Corps volunteer in Namibia, in southern Africa. Uh, having been frustrated in my efforts to learn a second language when I was in high school and college, I really wanted to use my, my uh, immersion experience living in a, in a rural village where very little English was spoken and where my, my target language, which was called Oshiwambo, uh, was, was, surrounded me. Uh, to finally help me develop a, a strong communicative ability in a different language. And for me, the most challenging part of learning this new language, language seemed to be getting a handle on the lexicon. Because this was a Bantu language that had very little, has very little in common lexically with English, except for a, a fair number of loan words like um, bicicleta for, for bicycle. And although I had pretty good abilities at pronouncing, discriminating the sounds of this new language and discriminating among and reproducing the grammatical patterns of, of the language, my memory for vocabulary items wasn't the best. And so I found myself putting a lot of effort and a lot of time into that aspect of, aspect of my learning. And then when I moved to South Korea and started working there and started trying to learn the Korean language, I found a similar situation, a language uh, very dissimilar to English, whose vocabulary I basically had to start learning from scratch. So I really spent a lot of time thinking about how to make the very difficult, the very daunting task of second language vocabulary learning manageable for myself, but also for, uh, also for my students. Professor Rinali tried to learn Ashiwambo when he was teaching English in Nambia, and he really had a hard time learning vocabulary. And then he went to Korea. He had the same problem. When he tried to learn Korean, again, he had problems remembering the vocabulary. Professor Rinali started in California. He then went to Africa and then South Korea. Wherever he went, the problem was the same. He had trouble learning vocabulary. Based on Professor Rinali's experience, he wanted to find better strategies for learning vocabulary, strategies that he could use himself, as well as strategies that he could use to help his students learn better. 